Hi, I'm Maddie, and as you can see, the Earth Unplugged team have finally given me my own office in the beautiful rural Oxfordshire countryside. We've had some brilliant questions coming in from you guys this week, and here are some of our favourites that you asked. Up first, whoever 121 asks, do all animals need sleep? So for something that takes up a third of our lives, we actually know very little about it. We don't even know why we need it. All we do know is that sleep is essential for brain power, memory, um, judgment, speech. And if we don't get between five and 11 hours of it, then we begin to struggle with these vital elements. So sleep is generally described a little bit vaguely as a state of immobility that can quickly be reversed combined with a greatly reduced rate of responsiveness to stimuli. So due to our difficulties of explaining what sleep actually is and our lack of research outside of birds and mammals, scientists tend to be a little bit hesitant when attributing the word sleep to reptiles, fish, and especially invertebrates, preferring to use the term rest instead. However, where research has been done, flies, zebrafish, and even a nematode worm show changes in gene expression between sleep and wakefulness, similar to those seen in mammals, suggesting they do sleep as we think of it. But it gets even more complex. Some animals, most notably whales and dolphins, have unihemispheric sleep, which means that one half of their brain can rest whilst the other half remains alert, allowing them to rise to the surface and breathe mid-snooze. So truthfully, there's still a lot we don't know about sleep, particularly in other species, but we do know that it's very important. And there is quite a bit of research suggesting that if you don't get enough of it, you could be drastically shortening your life. So make sure you get enough kit. Next up, Helbatori asks, what is a narwhal's horn used for? Well, Helbatori, you're not the only one wondering because the biological jury is still out, usually found on males. The general consensus is that they may play a part in mating rituals, whether that's to impress the ladies or to battle the other males. To back this theory up, narwhals have been seen with broken tusks, and one was even seen with the tip of one embedded in his skull. But research also suggests that the tusks are extremely sensitive, with up to 10 million nerve endings inside. So surely not the greatest adaptation if the tusk was just intended as a bony weapon. So some have suggested that it might actually be an aid for navigation underwater, a little bit like the way a blind person uses a stick. Two questions down and neither one with a satisfactory answer. So bring on the final question. And Alfonso Torres asks, how does a snake produce its venom? Snake venom evolved about 60 to 80 million years ago, and it may have started out as a mutated form of digestive enzyme or an immune system protein. Snake venom is an advanced saliva composed mainly of toxic enzymes and proteins. The toxins are stored and produced in the venom glands located behind the eyes. The venom of every snake species is slightly different, with around 20 different types of enzymes being identified in snakes across the world. Short front fang snakes like a cobra produce a neurotoxic venom, which paralyzes the respiratory system of its prey, stopping the heart and lungs to cause death. Viperine snakes like the European adder have long, hollow, hinged fangs, and their venom is typically a hemotoxin, which causes tissue to rapidly decay, stops blood clotting, resulting in internal and external bleeding, and ultimately, death. Phew, a question we could actually answer. We love your questions, even the ones that still have scientists scratching their heads, so keep them coming in. And you never know, you might get your answer in the next video. So subscribe so you make sure you don't miss it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered if birds get tired flying?